Today on Sunday the 5th of April we are celebrating Palm Sunday when we remember that people waved palm branches as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Every year since 2005 Inch Church has been decorated with palms. Large and small they have graced the church from windows to pews. From the entrance to the chancel there has been an avenue of palms. Since I've only been the minister of Inch Church for the last six months I have sadly not seen the church decorated in person though there are currently various palms waiting to be used to decorate the church which will now have to wait for another year. The triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem is recorded in each of the four Gospels and our reading today is from John's Gospel. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, the disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed the sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. This was a day unlike any other for Jesus and his disciples. The gentle teacher, the hidden prophet, the humble miracle worker, a ministry constructed in the silent, quiet and empty places of Israel. And yet today Jesus was riding into Jerusalem. Word began to get around. People cut down palm branches and began to wave them. Whispers became excited chatter. Conversations became enthusiastic shouts. Jesus was coming! Jesus was coming! Like the wind blowing through a forest, the noise, the excitement and the joy spread as more and more people prepared for the coming of Jesus on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It must have been an amazing day. The disciples must have felt that there was now no stopping Jesus. That this event would bring in the revolution that was needed. That Jesus would lead the people and be the Messiah that they longed for. Who would bring freedom and true change to the nation. However, their views were not the same as what Jesus saw. Jesus saw a king humbling himself. Jesus saw a servant washing his disciples' feet. Jesus saw an innocent man being hung on a cross as a criminal. And yet Jesus pressed on because he also saw beyond the trouble and the hardship into a place of peace and hope. As we face this time of hardship, what do we see? Do we see just the pain and sorrow? Or do we see an opportunity to bless each other? Do we see confusion and doubt? Or do we see an opportunity to serve those in need? Do we see uncertainty and fear? Or do we see an opportunity to listen and provide real care? This is our moment. 
Not a time to start planning large changes or to wait for some great leader to emerge, but together with others to act in small ways. Remember, one person waving a palm branch at Jesus didn't make a procession, but when lots of people did the same thing, then the crowd formed and the excitement grew. Nor did one person putting their cloak down for Jesus to walk on create a carpet, but when everyone did it, then that was an impressive sight. An individual doesn't make a movement until they come together with other people. It is in this time of crisis that we need to do what we can. The little things, helping, phoning, caring, staying safe, are really important when we all do it. Together we are guaranteed to make a difference to those in need, our family and friends, our communities, as well as the NHS and the other services that are under threat. Also let us not wait for the crowd to form for us to join, but trust that as we step out in service, we will find others doing the same things and together the change will take place. I have always believed in the power of small acts repeated many times by different people. This is our calling to show God's love in small ways each and every day as we seek to bless one another. So let us continue to serve in this time of crisis as we do all we can, trusting that the little things that we do will make a big difference when we do it together. Shall we pray? Loving Father, we rejoice in your love and in your commitment to use us to bless those we know often in small ways that sometimes we ourselves do not always see. You take our words, our actions and our very attitudes and you use them to encourage the people that we know. Open our eyes to see ways that we can serve you. Open our ears to hear your gentle whisper on the wind of your spirit. Open our mouths to have conversations with warmth and kindness. Loving Father, as we consider the events of the past week and look to the uncertainty of the next, we are so glad that you have been with us and that you will always be there. Give us peace as we lay our concerns before you. Bless those in the NHS, those in care homes or caring in the community, the teachers who are guiding from afar, those in shops, those working for the council, or those serving the wider community in many different ways. Bless those who are ill, who are in need of treatment, or who are struggling with this period of lockdown. Bless those who have lost loved ones and who find the smallest of memories the hardest to cope with as their love never diminishes through time. Bless all those who lead our governments and give them the wisdom that they need as they decide the future path of our nation throughout this time of crisis. Wonderful God, as we take each small step with you along the path that you have placed before us. We trust you to lead us and guide us so that we grow ever closer to you. In these coming days as we reflect on the events leading up to our Saviour's death on the cross and then beyond into the joy of Easter Day and his amazing resurrection. We ask that you would show us afresh the wonder of this good news and may we always know the forgiveness and life that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Before I play this week's worship song, which has been written and sung by my good friends Alan, Barbara and Gina, who are known as Spearhead, I want to read 
Psalm 24, which this song is based on. The words seem very apt as we remember Jesus, the King of the Jews, riding into Jerusalem. And I imagine these words could well have been sung by some of the crowd on that day. The psalmist writes, Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. During this week, because it is Holy Week, I plan to have some additional reflections. So if you don't receive an email about these reflections, you may want to click the subscribe button below so that you are informed when a new video is uploaded.
And so until we meet again, take care, stay well, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.